Today, I'm going to talk about the number one way the narcissist wins you back. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So before I get into that number one way, I'm going to ask you a question. So why do you think that God implemented the no contact rule within his holy word? Well, I'm going to tell you nine different ways and reasons why God has instituted that command. And the first one is to provide separation. So once you have detached from the narcissist, whether they discarded you or you discarded them, the point is, is that no contact rule that God talks about is to to keep you separated from that darkness, separated from that evil. The second reason is to protect your heart. That's right. After it has been trampled on and cut and split into pieces by that narcissist, God wants your heart now protected. And the third reason is because God wants your mind protected. You know, you remember all the confusion and all the chaos and all the belittling and all the things that just affected you, not just emotionally, but mentally and got you to doubt yourself and lower your own self-esteem and value. Well, God wants your mind protected in that no contact rule. The fourth one is to remove you from temptation because we all know that the narcissist is real good about greasing up their fingers and coming at you to hook you back to them. So it's to remove any temptation. And the fifth reason for the no contact rule is so that you can get off that dark, dirty path you were on with that narcissist, that entanglement, and get yourself put back onto your true path of righteousness and destiny and to either rebuild your passion and purpose or to get back onto it before you were entangled with the narcissist. And the sixth reason of the no contact rule is to provide you with space to rebuild your boundaries and make them stronger and more sturdy and be very clear and concise about your newfound boundaries. And the seventh reason is to regain and restore your peace. You all remember the crazy making times with the narcissist, all the chaos and confusion. This is to get you back to that peaceful state that you were in before the narcissist. And the eighth reason is to restore your joy. That's right. You and I, the empath, the good person, the Christian, we are able to self-regulate, be self-aware, help to rebuild ourselves and be a better version every day. But with all of that distraction and entanglement from the narcissist, you know what? You forgot your inner joy because so much has been stolen from you. And the ninth reason for the no contact is so you can restore your happiness. Now, joy is an inside job. That means no matter what's going on around, you can still manifest joy. Happiness is more of an existential type of uh, effect on you, where your surroundings make you happy. The people around you help to add to your happiness, right? The, maybe the new furniture or the new job, they add to your happiness. When you're surrounded by the dirty trickery and tactics of the narcissist, that's just not going to be in place at all. Now, before I answer that question of the number one way that the narcissist wins you back, I'm going to tell you a little biblical story, an account in God's word. You all remember the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now, Adam was given one simple command that he passed that on to Eve, and that was this of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in that day you will surely die. That's God speaking 
to Adam, who then passed that command on to Eve. That was the only single command that God gave to Adam and Eve. And at that time, Adam had dominion over the earth, which was a tremendous privilege and honor. Now, who do you think was lurking around to sabotage Adam and to gain his authority over and dominion over the earth? Who do you think was lurking around in that garden? It was Satan, also called the serpent. And there were a number of steps that the serpent did to sabotage Adam and to deceive Eve. The first one was, he waited till Eve was alone. That's right. What do narcissists do who have narcissistic tendencies like what the serpent's doing about to do here with Eve? They isolate you. They get you alone. And that's what he did with Eve. So he watched every day and he waited for just the right moment. And the second thing that the serpent did is he got Eve to question that one command that I shared with you from Genesis chapter three, verse one. And how did he do that? He said to her, yay, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Well, yes, he knew that. How did, how could he question her if he hadn't heard it? be said if he hadn't heard Adam sharing it with Eve. So the serpent knew very well what that one commandment was. The third thing he did, he lied to Eve to confuse her and deceive her by saying in Genesis chapter three, verse four, then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Now, that was a blatant lie because what did God say in Genesis chapter three, verse one? He said, in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the serpent just totally lied about it, totally said the opposite. So he blatantly lied to her to confuse her and to deceive her. The fourth thing that the serpent did is he rewrote God's narrative. What God said, he just went, said, no, that's not really what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. And he did this with future faking, as the serpent says in Genesis chapter three, verse five, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, did God say that? No, he did not say that you will be like gods. Guess what the devil did? He rewrote the narrative. He added to the commandment to tempt her saying, oh, well, you know what? Not only will you not die, but God knows you'll be just like a God. Why? What's, the, what's on, this, on Satan's mind all the time? Wants to be like the most high God. He wants to exalt himself like the most high God and be above the most high God. That's why he got booted out of heaven in the first place. And now he's tempting Eve with the very same lie that, oh, God knows you'll be like God. That was a blatant lie and future faking of, oh, if you just disobey this commandment, guess what? It's going to work out so well for you. Well, did it work out really well for Satan, for Lucifer, when he tried to usurp God's throne? And then Michael and his angels had a huge battle with him. And then he was booted out of the out of the heavens didn't work out too well there were consequences the serpent's deception with confusion and lies ended up with adam and eve both just disobeying that one single command that god had given them in the garden of eden and there were consequences to that and i'm going to share with you what those were but first, in that story is the answer to the question, what is the number one way the narcissist wins you back? And that is with conversation. That's right. With Eve engaging in conversation with the serpent, the serpent was able to confuse her, was able to lie and deceive her, and he was able to rewrite the narrative 
just by engaging in conversation with Eve. That is the number one way the narcissist wins you back. And that's why God's no contact rule must be obeyed so that you can have all those nine things and more that I mentioned earlier in this video to protect you and to watch over you. That's so very important to keep that no contact rule in place. So the four part consequence to Adam and Eve disobeying God's one command by allowing the serpent to beguile Eve and Adam just going ahead and going right along with it to disobey that one commandment, there were four consequences. The first one where God said, in the day thou eatest thereof, you shall surely die. He died spiritually in that there was no more spiritual connection between him and Eve and God. That's right, because they didn't die with their breath life. They went on to live in the 900s, 900 years and plus years of age and have progeny, have children. What died that moment in time was their spiritual connection with God. The second thing that happened is that by that Adam's disobedience, he handed over his authority and dominion over the earth to the devil. The third thing that happened is that the ground became cursed. And the fourth thing that happened is that Adam and Eve were ushered out of the Garden of Eden so that they would not be tempted to eat of the tree of life, which would mean that physically they would live forever. So as I was sharing this, did you pick out from that account of Adam and Eve and that serpent and the deception that the number one way the narcissist wins you back is through conversation by getting you to engage with him or her that opens the door for them to infiltrate you with doubt confusion deception lies future faking all of that devilish tactics to get their hooks back into you to suck supply from you and to destroy you so I'm going to go over that list with you that when the narcissist wants to engage in conversation, oh, please, please, let's just have a talk. Oh, I need closure. Oh, I want to share my heart. Oh, I've really, really changed. Please just give me this one, one time of having a conversation with you. Do not be tempted because here's what you're going to get with that conversation with the ex-narcissist that you have detached or are trying to detach from. You're going to get a fake apology and you know when those crocodile tears come, the thing about crocodile tears is what's behind the tears of a crocodile, those big old jaws with those big old teeth ready to clamp back down on you. Then you're also going to get future faking. Oh, let's go to therapy. Oh, I've changed. Oh, I want to change. I'll listen to you now. Oh, please give me another chance. I'm, I'm a changed man or I'm a changed woman. Right. Then the third thing, you're going to get gaslighting. So, you know, you sl I, I don't really think you're remembering rightly because I remember it happening this way. Are you sure it happened that way? Oh, now I'm so confused. Aren't you so confused too? Yeah, we're all confused. Nah. Now, we see what you're doing. That gaslighting tactic is not going to work anymore. The fourth thing is to deceive you with lies. Again, the future faking and, hey, I'm changed. And, oh, you know what? I started going to therapy. And, oh, my goodness, I, I started to read the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth thing they're going to do is deflect everything back onto you in a weepy manner. Oh, you know what? I did that because you made me do it. It was all the way you spoke to me. You hurt my feelings. Oh, that that's the only reason why I cheated. I lied. I deceived you. I stole your money. I stole your car. I'm ruining your peace. Oh, it's because you made me do it, right? Deflection. And then the sixth way is to love bomb you again. Yeah, you know, that, that love bombing phase was so awesome, right? And you're almost like addicted to it. And then they start to do that again to you. Do the love bombing. But don't you fall for it 
because now the motto of this channel, once you know, you got to go and stay gone. Keep that no contact rule in because once the narcissist can reel you in, right, to have another conversation or a last conversation together, you're putting yourself in harm's way. You're putting yourself in a place you don't want to be, a slippery slope where, you know what? They can just pull it, push the right buttons, pull at the right heartstrings, and reel you back in. The seventh thing is they'll confuse you into changing your mind about them. It'll be like, well, you know, don't you remember the good times? And y you know, you, you said you would never leave me. And, and oh, I believed you when you said that, uh, oh, you would always take me back. And I want to tell you that the moment you engage with conversation and it leads to you taking the narcissist back, there will be consequences to you because your time moving forward with the narc after he or she wins you back with conversation is going to be so much worse than the time before. Look at what happened to Adam and Eve and their consequences. So remember, there are only consequences. There are no, there's no reality to what the narcissist promises you. So remember, the number one way the narcissist wins you back or even just wins anybody over to their side is with conversation because their words are all full of deception and lies and they have absolutely no sense of guilt or shame in doing that to you because any of the shame they feel inside, they're putting it on you and making you their victim and holding you bondage and hostage. So you must remember this. Do not engage to, with conversation with the ex-narc. And if you have to be in contact because of children or other situations, remember Gray Rock. You don't owe that narcissist any other information than the responsibilities you may share together. So leave your comments down below. Know that I love you and pray for you daily. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.